In this tutorial, I'll explain what Gamma Correction is and how to implement it in your OpenGL project. So, Gamma is basically the sensitivity to different shades of color. What do I mean by that? Well, look at this graph where the x-axis represents the input color we present in our code, while the y-axis represents the final color that is displayed on our screens. If the graph is a line, then the input will equal the output. And this is good, because we know that whatever color we write in code is the color that we'll actually see on our monitors. But that is not how it works in reality, at least not for monitors. Because of historical reasons, monitors automatically have a gamma curve that looks like this. So that means that if we input a color of 0.5, which would be the perfect gray right between black and white, then we would actually get a color of 0.218 on our screens, which would be a much darker gray. But we don't want this. We want to represent the light in a linear fashion, since light in reality is linear. So to do that, we need to convert all of our colors to the inverse of the gamma function, so that way when the gamma function is applied, we get a linear function, because they cancel each other out. This inverse is called the gamma correction function. So I hope that made sense. If it did not, look up some better explanations. I am sure there are plenty of those on the internet. Now for the actual coding. A really easy way to enable gamma correction is by writing gl enable gl frame buffer sRGB. The problem with this is that it gives us no control over the power of the gamma. Generally speaking, a gamma power of 2.2, the default value, works best for most monitors, but we might want to be able to control it a bit. To do that, we can simply apply the gamma correction function to the fragment shader of our post-processing frame buffer. If you run the program, you'll see everything is much brighter, and in fact, the meshes and background color are way too bright and washed out. Why is this? Wasn't this supposed to make the colors look better and more realistic? Is life just a washed up mess? No. When you were choosing your background color, guess how you were most likely doing it? That's right, you were doing it by looking at your monitor. Basically, it already has gamma correction applied to it just because of how we chose it by looking at the monitor, which is bad because we are now applying the correction a second time to it. The same goes for the textures of the meshes which were created by fellow humans. So to fix this for the background color, we can simply raise each part of our color to our gamma value. As for the textures, when loading them in, if they are glRGBA, we can load them in as glsRGBα, and if they are glRGB, we can load them in as glsRGB. This way, OpenGL will automatically apply the default gamma value to all textures. If you want to apply a custom gamma value to textures, you will have to do so in every fragment shader with a texture. Good luck! Now if you run the application, you'll see that the colors look a lot better and more realistic. But you might still have a problem. If you look closely in certain parts of the image, you might notice some stepped gradients. This is due to precision errors that we get when we keep transforming the colors between one gamma level and another. Because remember that floats are not infinitely precise. Thankfully, this is an easy fix. You just have to make sure the textures you use for your frame buffers are at least 16-bit, if not even 32-bit in some cases. To do that, change their format from glRGB to glRGB16F or glRGB32F. You might not even need to do this if you're using a more modern version of OpenGL. And now you'll see that the artifacts are gone. That was it for this tutorial. As always, the source code and all sources and resources used are in the description. Bye!